Okay, boys and girls, it's time for the last chapter of Fenway and Hattie, chapter 20. The next morning, we head out to walk, but something's different. Instead of turning up the street as usual, Hattie and Food Lady go in the opposite direction. Is this the way to the dog park? My nose gets busy sniffing for clues. And right away, I find some. In the grassy park next door, I smell golden retriever and another breed I can't quite identify. Goldie? Patches? Is this where they live? My tail starts going berserk, and with good reason. Hattie and Food Lady turn into the front walkway. I pull them toward the house. The door opens and out steps Muffin Lady and Angel and more good news, Goldie and Patches on leashes. Woo-wee! <laughs> My whole body wiggles with excitement. Sup, ladies, I say. Our noses and tails go wild with friendly greetings. I almost can't believe it, Goldie says as we bound down the porch steps. Angel's coming on a walk with us after all this time. I'm so full of hope, Patches says in her lovely voice. Maybe our precious angel isn't lost to us after all. Never lose hope, I say proudly. I didn't. And now I have my Hattie back. What could have happened, Goldie says. Get this, I say. Turns out she was changing all right into a squirrel. <gasps> Horrors, the ladies gasp. Yeah, it was pretty frightening, but luckily I saved her in the nick of time. You saved her? What did you do, Patches says. It was nothing, just doing my job. Tell us, Patches says. Well, let's just say I can be pretty ferocious when I put my mind to it. Goldie looks like she wants to disagree, but thinks better of it. Wow. Fenway, Patches says in her loveliest, most admir admir admiring voice. You're a hero. Aw, shucks. The humans get busy yapping as we head into the street. Goldie and Patches do not think this is a bad idea, and I confess I'm getting used to it. The humans turn and go in our usual direction. I hope the ladies don't think we're headed somewhere. I'm tempted to tell them the bad news, that we're not going anywhere cool like the dog park. But I don't want to spoil our perfect day. As we stroll up the street, I can't help thinking this is the way it should be. Walking together like a family. We're in the zone, ears back, eyes straight ahead except for the humans who are chatting, not looking where they're going and dragging on the leash. In other words, not behaving at all, but somehow it's okay. When we pass by the grassy park with the perfectly still dog, he's still there, ears perked high, right. gaze fixed, carrying the same flowers in the same exact spot like he's never even moved. What do you suppose is his deal? I asked the ladies. What? They both say at the same time, him. I cock my head towards the perfectly still dog. Goldie and Patches exchange glance glances. They must be as perplexed as I am. Patches looks like she wants to say something, but she doesn't. Then Goldie says, Fenway, you've got an interesting way of looking at things. Well, thanks, I guess. We pass a few more grassy parks, trees, and bushes, then stop at a driveway where a lady human is rubbing sudsy water on a car. Food lady and muffin lady chat with her while a short human skips across the grass, her black silky hair bouncing behind her. She plops beside me and strokes my, sed, my, strokes my head. Oh, she coos, puppy! Clearly, this short human, uh, human appreciates a handsome dog. I lick her cheek and she giggles. She smells like glitter and glue. She smiles at the short humans. Zara, she says. Hattie nudges Angel, her eyes wide. She smells like she's getting an idea. Farther up the street, my ears pick up a familiar sound. Dinky tinka tinka too. That musical truck, it's headed straight for us. Hattie and Angel must recognize it, too, because their energy surges. 
They hold out their hands to the tall humans who give them flimsy little papers. Patty and Angel bounce on their toes, eagerly awaiting the truck's arrival. Obviously, they are ready to confront the monster like a couple of ferocious dogs. I guess they've been inspired by a certain canine hero. But can they handle this evil on their own? I hardly have time to decide. The musical beast appears, its tinkly voice blaring, Go away, you nasty truck! I bark, leaping and thrashing wildly. If the leash weren't holding me back, I'd, I'd... Then way! Patty shouts. She's pushing her palm toward the pavement. Down! I know this! I know this! I drop to the ground and lie at her feet. Patty pats my head, her body radiating total happiness. Good boy, good boy, she says. She, she sounds deliciously wonderful, just like the treat that sails into my mouth. The ladies look on and pressed. What can I say? And the short humans are just as successful in getting what they want. Clearly intimidated, the evil human disappears from the truck window and then returns with ice cream, which Hattie and Angel snatch right out of his hands. That's my girls. As we watch the musical truck cruise off into the distance, I sidle up next to Hattie. Thankfully, I don't have to wait long. A nice glob drops right in front of my paw. Slurp! Mmm, vanilla. Back at home, another amazing thing happens. Me and Goldie and Patches head through the side gate and into the... Dog park! Hooray! Hooray! I romp with the ladies, tumbling and tussling and chasing for a long, long time. It's the most fun at the dog park ever. Eventually, we flop down in the cool grass for a rest. I lay my head next to Patches. She licks my nose. I'm considering a well-deserved snooze when sounds come from the front of the house. Short, human sounds. The ladies spring up. We all flock to the side gate to investigate. The short human we met on our walk is skipping up the driveway, a sparkly headband on her head. Patty and Angel are rushing to greet her. Zara, they cry. Patty's waving and she's holding the jump rope. Patty hands one end of the jump rope to Zara. Angel goes to take the other, but then shakes her head, a huge grin spreading across her face. Patty's eyebrows arch, but then she starts grinning too. She and Zara grip the handles and stand far apart. Soon the jump rope is turning and slapping the pavement in a steady beat. Patty begins chanting in a sing-song rhythm. The others chant along with her. The jump rope circles over, around, and under a very happy Angel again and again and again. Angel hops up and down, grinning widely as the jump rope turns and slaps, slaps, slaps the driveway. Aha, Patches says. So it's a game. I cock my head. What do you mean? Angel's been hopping over a rope like that for days and days, Goldie explains. We couldn't figure out why, Patches says. Goldie's fur prickles. Maybe you couldn't. I always knew it was a game. As I recall, you were just as puzzled as I was, Patches says. Hmm, says Goldie. A happy squeal directs our focus back to the gate. We watch the jumping, chanting short humans for a while. Then Goldie snatches a stick and takes off. Me and Patches chase her around the dog park. When it's dark outside, I finally have Hattie all to myself. I'm cuddled in her soft and cozy bed. She kisses my brown paw, then my white paw. She showers my neck with kisses. I slobber her cheek and she giggles. Hattie brushes my fur and sings, Best buddies, best buddies. It's the happiest moment ever. Me and my Hattie are forever together and nothing can come between us. Sighing and with contentment, I close my eyes and then I'm sprawled out in the soft and cozy grass. Grass.
Chipper chatter squawk. An evil squirrel climbs over the fence, his sharp drooly fangs glistening in the moonlight. I sprint after him. Chipper chatter squawk. It's called a dog park for a reason, I bark. He scurries toward the back fence, where Hattie is crouched down in the grass, her arms wide open. Watch out, Hattie, I bark. But it's too late. The evil squirrel jumps right into her arms. Oh, she coos, caressing his bristly fur. He chippers softly and snuggles against her neck. No, no, somebody please tell me Hattie's not actually cuddling that nasty creature. He looks back and glares at me. He opens his mouth. Crack, boom, kaboom. Whoa, that's one loud squirrel. My eyelids pop open. Oh, shoo. I'm in Hattie's soft and cozy bed, shuddering. A bright light flashes outside. Rain pounds on the window. This cannot be good. Hattie's clutching the used-to-be bear. She reaches for me. Best buddies, she whispers. Shaking with courage, I crawl onto her chest. I nuzzle against the used-to-be bear. Hattie strokes my back. Making Hattie happy is a big job, but luckily, I'm a professional. The end.